The farmer of Tilesbury Vale William Wordsworth tis not for the unfeeling, the falsely refined, the squeamish in taste, and the narrow of mind, and the small critic wielding his delicate pen, that I sing of old Adam, the pride of old men. He dwells in the centre of London's wide town. His staff is a scepter, his grey hair is a crown, and his bright eyes look brighter, set off by the streak of the unfaded rose that still blooms on his cheek. Mid the dews, in the sunshine of morn, mid the joy of the fields, he collected that bloom, when a boy, that countenance there fashioned, which, spite of a stain that his life hath received, to the last will remain. A farmer he was, and his house far and near was the boast of the country for excellent cheer. How oft have I heard in sweet Tilesbury Vale of the silver-rimmed horn whence he dealt his mild ale. Yet Adam was far as the farthest from ruin, his fields seemed to know what their master was doing, and turnips, and corn land, and meadow, and lee, all caught the infection, as generous as he. Yet Adam prized little the feast and the bowl, the fields better suited the ease of his soul, he strayed through the fields like an indolent white, the quiet of nature was Adam's delight. For Adam was simple in thought, and the poor, familiar with him, made an inn of his door, he gave them the best that he had. Or, to say what less may mislead you, they took it away. Thus thirty smooth years did he thrive on his farm, the genius of plenty preserved him from harm, at length, what the most is a season of sorrow, his means are run out, he must beg, or must borrow. To the neighbors he went, all were free with their money for his hive had so long been replenished with honey, that they dreamt not at earth. He continued his rounds, knock here, and knock there, pounds still adding to pounds. He paid what he could with his ill-gotten pelf, and something, it might be, reserved for himself, then, what is too true, without hinting a word, turned his back on the country, and off like a bird. You lift up your eyes. But I guess that you frame a judgment too harsh of the sin and the shame. In him it was scarcely a business of art, for this he did all in the ease of his heart. To London, a sad emigration I ween with his grey hairs he went from the brook in the green. And there, with small wealth but his legs in his hands, as lonely he stood as a crow on the sands. All trades, as need was, did old Adam assume, served as stable boy, errand boy, porter, and groom. But nature is gracious, necessity kind, and, in spite of the shame that may lurk in his mind, he seems ten birthdays younger, is green and is stout. Twice as fast as before does his blood run about. You would say that each hair of his beard was alive, and his fingers are busy as bees in a hive. For he's not like an old man that leisurely goes about work that he knows, in a track that he knows. But often his mind is compelled to demur, and you guess that the more than his body must stir. In the throng of the town like a stranger is he, like one whose own country's far over the sea. And nature, while through the great city he hees, full ten times a day takes his heart by surprise. This gives him the fancy of one that is young, more of soul in his face than of words on his tongue. Like a maiden of twenty he trembles and sighs, and tears of fifteen will come into his eyes. What's a tempest to him, or the dry parching heats? Yet he watches the clouds that pass over the streets with a look of such earnestness often will stand, you might think he'd twelve reapers at work in the strand. Where proud Covent Garden, in desolate hours of snow and hoarfrost, spreads her fruits and her flowers, old Adam will smile at the pains that have made poor winter look fine in such strange masquerade. Mid coaches and chariots, a wagon of straw, like a magnet, the heart of old Adam can draw. With a thousand soft pictures his memory will teem, and his hearing is touched with the sounds of a dream. Up the Haymarket Hill he oft whistles his way, thrusts his hands in a wagon, and smells at the hay. He thinks of the fields he so often hath mown, and is happy as if the rich freight were his own. But chiefly to Smithfield he loves to repair, if you pass by at morning, you'll meet with him there. The breath of the cows you may see him inhale, and his heart all the while is in Tilesbury Vale. Now farewell, old Adam. When low thou art laid, may one blade of grass spring up over thy head. And I hope that thy grave, wheresoever it be, will hear the wind sigh through the leaves of a tree.